Cleveland Golf is introducing their Frontline series of putters, and what you have in front of you is the Elevato. Uh, I've actually been fortunate enough to spend a couple of weeks with the Elevato now prior to its release. Uh, so I, I want to focus specifically on this model, but I will say the Frontline series is made up of a few different mallet shapes. Uh, some very familiar that we've seen in other lines, uh, some that appeared with the TFI 2135 lineup. Um, and this honestly is kind of an evolution of, of that line to me, uh, and, and I'll get into that here in a minute. Either way, with the Elevato, and, and I wanted to start on the face because what you're seeing here is going to be the big story, the big tech story. Uh, these are $199.99 putters, so there has to be a story that goes with them. It's, it's actually not a bad price point for what's going on. Uh, and if you look here, you're going to notice the outer weighting, and that's a reason that I think the price point works. These are MIMMED tungsten weights. Uh, so the, one of the hottest things in golf right now is the metal injected molding. Uh, so these tungsten weights are injected uh, as far as uh, positioning and everything else to make it as precise as they can and to get the weight distribution perfect. Uh, alongside with that, you see Cleveland's soft insert technology, which stands for speed optimized face tech. So I want to dive into those things for just a minute. In most mallet putters, and I'll show you the overall shape of the Elevato here. In most mallet putters, the idea is to move uh, mass as far back into the outside as you can to increase the MOI. MOI means more balance in the stroke and hopefully a more forgiving overall putter with a consistent roll. Uh, Cleveland Golf is going to take a little bit of a different approach to that this year, and it starts with the weighting. Where most mallet putters are seeking to move mass as far back as you can, uh, Cleveland has now decided to move the, the mass more forward. The reason for that is, um, based on their research, uh, the more weight you put back, you not only increase the MOI, but you also move the center of gravity down and back. And they believe that that poses a stability issue through the impact that can be corrected by moving weight forward in a mallet design so you get the best of both worlds. So by moving these weights to the outer edges of the front of the face, um, they are still increasing the moment of inertia, but they're also bringing the center of gravity forward, uh, which their big story for that is stability, stability, stability. Um, at impact in particular, as opposed to just through the stroke. I saw a much more consistent roll than, than I expected to, uh, because mentally for me, with as many putters as I mess with, the idea of moving these weights this far forward in a mallet design is a foreign thought, um, but it was effective. And I think part of that is, is just the blend of what you're doing with the shape itself. Uh, the Elevato shape, in my opinion, is probably the best overall mallet shape with a wing design on it. And I, and I know that's bold talk and that's going to get some people fired up. But the reason being, it, it blends itself into a mid-mallet shape more than a lot of things do. It's not a huge mallet overall. And now, with focusing on moving that weight so far forward, you can see in the cutouts of the flanges, they've ended up with a more modern look than what they had in the past when they first introduced it. Uh, along with that, the soft face insert, uh, SOFT, it, it isn't actually soft uh, per se. To me, it feels very much like a milled putter, which a lot of people are going to look, look for. Uh, the key to it, though, is the variable milling pattern that you see. Uh, that's there. Again, speed optimized face tech. So if you miss uh, to the outsides of this, the idea is you're going to maintain more speed or you're going to deaden more speed depending on where you hit it. Uh, basically, Cleveland wants to have consistent distances based on where the putt is being struck. And some people are going to look at this and go, wow, that's a really small area to strike a putt. But truth be told, I think misses in putters are over sensationalized a lot. Uh, a lot of people aren't hitting out here on the extreme. If you're if you're if you're striking putts on the far extreme of the putter, uh, you have other issues at hand. So most are going to be within this realm, and misses are going to fall inside of it. I saw exactly what they talked about. I saw extreme consistency. I saw a forward roll that was really really pleasing. Uh, there's not a whole lot to argue about with it. There was no skidding, there was no hopping, um, and there is a very, very solid and and not not overly firm, not overly clicky feeling at impact. Uh, the rest of the story, though, actually stays with the face height uh, and the 2135 technology. It's going to exist in all of the mallet putters within the lineup, but not the blade that they're releasing. For those that don't remember or don't know, 2135 stands for 21.35 millimeters, and that's the actual uh, midway point of a golf ball. Uh, not all golf balls, because some vary in size, but the vast majority, 21.35 is going to put uh, right in the center line of the putter. In the EFI version, or the TFI version of the 2135, uh, they used an alignment aid here in the flange, and it's set uh, at that 21.35 uh, height. Now, 
uh, rather than doing that, you're going to notice the face of this is actually a lot more shallow uh, than what we're seeing in a whole lot of putters. And that is the 2135 tech. So rather than having something that sticks out, uh, stands out, looks awkward, if you will, uh, to the user, you have a usable tech that looks very, very normal. Uh, the nice thing about it is with 2135, it doesn't matter if you line your eyes up over the ball or if you line your eyes up over the heel of the putter. Um, the idea is you're going to have the same view of the alignment aid at all times. Uh, this is a very savvy move. Um, as far as how much it works, that's going to be to the individual. I liked it. Uh, I didn't notice the more shallow face. Some of you might. Uh, that's going to be a very personal uh, situation. Also worth noting, they've decided in these mallet models to bring two different uh, neck types, two different hosel types. I worked with the single bend. There's also going to be a slant neck. Uh, so Cleveland is focused not only on bringing uh, some pretty good tech uh, to market here, but also bringing uh, multiple different fitting opportunities for, as far as stroke, uh, straight stroke, slight arc, uh, severe arc. Uh, all of those should be covered within this lineup. Now, the shape itself uh, is going to be a love it or a hate it thing. If you're a mallet person, I think this is one that's worth picking up and looking at. I think it does the wing shape better than anything else on the market. But I do believe with this look, with the all black shaft, with the black Lampkin uh, sink fit putter grip that's also attached to this, Cleveland's created something for $199 that merits uh, attention and it should get some attention. So I very much look forward to everybody's feedback. Hopefully you'll jump in on the hackersparadise.com and give us yours, uh, as well as seeing my feedback in the written review that is, uh, is going to be coming along with this. 